Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. I want to give a shout out to all those that continue to support and all the people at RJD that are still in the struggle. Yeah, I heard about that one incident, right? Kind of, kind of wait till I gather more facts before I speak on the subject. So, with that being said, continue to subscribe, share, and let's get this shit moving. This episode right here is going to be about habits, quirks, and kind of the, the, the stuff that we pick up being in a prison system, right? I've been, I've been out already two months, right? December 1st, I resigned from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, CDCR, at the rank of lieutenant after 16 years. That's 16 years of being in there, right? Yeah, they like to say we get to go home, but ultimately, you're still thinking about work while you're there, especially as you promote. It gets worse, right? So, first and foremost, the lingo, right? Talking, how we talk. Uh, I beg to differ as far as like, I feel like I've always talked this way. I It may have gotten amplified. It may have gotten turned up. Turned up. I don't believe I was using the word turned up before. Uh, so, the way you talk, mannerisms, stuff like that. Demeanorism, right? The second thing is scanning. Right, always scanning your your surroundings, having your back up against the wall, right? And this goes for correctional staff, but I'm sure inmates or former inmates can agree that these are kind of survival mechanisms, okay? Now the scanning, I, I got a little bit or a lot of that from coming back from Iraq, right? But for sure, you're definitely doing a lot of scanning with your eyes, your back against the wall. And the reason your back is against the wall so nobody can come up from behind you and stab you in the neck. Period. Point blank. That's it. Now the scanning is, right, your, your senses are elevated. So you got your ears going, your eyes going, and your, uh, yeah, you got your nose going too when you smell weed. Yeah, guys, we can smell the weed. So you're looking. You're looking for threats, dangers. You're looking for shit out of the ordinary, stuff that... <clears throat> there is there is routine routine in prison sometimes you can spot things that are out of routine actually you are able to spot things that are out of routine it just the mind has a way of like a hey, alerting you like hey that shit ain't normal like the subconscious mind right so we have that going for us thus far okay alarms the sound of a buzz, buzzing like, <clears throat> I've been out two months, even when I was in there, like it's still, shit just happened the other day, it happened the other day, my daughter were at, and I were at Best Buy, right, gotta upgrade my, gotta upgrade my Wi-Fi system for you guys, and the, it sounded to me a fire alarm, right, you guys all know what a fire alarm sounds like, right? My daughter is like, daddy, daddy, what's that? And I'm like, my heart did what it did, right? Like the anxiety shoots up, spikes up. And then I just had to slowly explain to her, right? Like calm myself down and say, oh, baby, that's a, that's a fire alarm. Or maybe somebody stole something and, and walked out without paying for it. And then, you know. The employees did what they did. They kind of resp <laughs> responded, right? Well, they went to go investigate. I don't know what it was. Maybe somebody pulled the laptop off of the the counter. Why wouldn't you? They're expensive these days. So sounds, alarms, right? Costco. Costco has that buzzing sound that, that, that gets to me, right? One of the latest ones that I have noticed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are people running? People running. Okay, I don't mean like joggers with their fucking Apple iPhones, head AirPods in, or their chicks with their booty shorts and a little fanny pack. That that's a jog, right? That's running for recreational purposes. I'm talking about you're 
chilling and people are running when they should not be running, right? This used to drive me nuts. I wasn't a, a stickler. I wasn't an asshole cop. I wasn't necessarily by the book. But if I saw inmates running when they should not be running, like across the yard, Donovan is notorious. RJD is notorious for this. It used to drive me nuts. I would sometimes open the door and yell across the yard, stop running. That did slow down over the years. Like it was getting nowhere with, with administration, right? Like you kind of, anyhow, no matter where I'm at, if somebody's running when they have no reason to be running, right? Like let's say you're at, I don't know. Inside of Walmart, right? People should not be running inside of Walmart. <laughs> and so it just, it, that, that gets my anxiety going. That gets my gears grinding. I kind of want to yell, stop running. And for those that have never been to prison or don't understand, man, we were kind of taught that in the, in the academy. Because you'll see free staff running. Like they'll... My window, my lieutenant window is by the side gate where uh, people have to exit and enter the yard. Some, like free staff, is they were going to see like the gate closing, like the, like the officer was about to close the gate. They'll start running. Oh, oh my God. I used to look out my window and see these people running. Usually that's all bad. Like, all right. You guys know how much that fucking pisses me off. Um... I talked about all the senses already, uh, the quirks. Man, I think that's it for now, right? So I'm not trying to. Uh, if you can, if you guys can think of any, drop them in in the comment box. All right. Other than that, the message for today. The message for today is. Unbreaking those habits, right? And I know it sucks, but in order to in order to uh, process trauma or get to the other side, we actually have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. All right, keep pushing forward.